Hi, Josh. Hi, everyone. It's, it's awesome to be able to speak to you today for this series because I binged through the whole thing this morning and I loved every single episode. I love seeing you all on screen together, but I'm curious uh... to know what most about this camaraderie your characters have as the Essex gang did you really enjoy exploring? What did we most enjoy exploring as the Essex gang? Yeah, the camaraderie your characters have. Think... To be honest, I think because it's it, it, narratively, we you know we're shooting in story or we're shooting chronologically, so we get to experience it all. You know, you get to yeah. experience the, the uh, meanness of Tom yeah. King repressing us all and keeping us down. Then he gets shot in the face. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't ruin that plot spoiler. Then something happens to him, and there's a <laughs> twist of fate where there's a new leader. Dick Turpin, <laughs> Noel Fielding, the dandy. And we get to experience those things as yeah. we go. So uh, not that we weren't best pals at the beginning, but, you know, by the end, you, you're, yeah, really, you're really want, you're, you're properly, you're properly rooting. Yeah. Them. And I think like definitely, certainly from my character's perspective, I'm kind of cynical and I think everyone's a bit crap and I want to leave the gang. And then, you know, stuff happens and I, and I, and I think I just become incredibly fond of, the people and I feel like maybe that's oh. through the audience's eyes don't touch me <laughs> <laughs> the audience's eyes you know hopefully you will feel fondly yeah. about them as well we definitely become one big happy family throughout and there is an underlying theme of love that I feel like I like to say because they do develop a real strong love for each other and just like siblings you argue you fight but in the end that love is there and the foundation is there and i feel like i get that first. and then behind the scenes that existed as well which isn't always the case and sometimes it can be a bit bristly and weird but uh we're really fortunate to have a wider cast of really kind people but we would more often than not the four of us be hanging a lot under little umbrellas to keep dry because it was raining in woods and it was four in the morning and we did lots of night shoots and we just got on well didn't we yeah oh that's amazing to hear and you know Dwayne honesty he seems to just love Turpin so how did Noel react to that almost constant reverence your character had for his character <laughs> do you know what Noel's got a restraining order <laughs> <laughs> no do you know I like the fact that um Noel um well Noel's character as well Dick Turpin actually embraces uh, honesty's love and admiration for him and he also gives honesty so much confidence to express himself and be the honesty that he was that was kind of suppressed by Tom King so I think that did um that did feel really nice to be fair oh, cool and you know Mark period costumes we often hear actors say are, are much fun to wear but you get the freedom to I think is when the character says to slay in that dress so yeah. what was that for you on set Great. I mean, it's so easy. You just hoik it up and you need to go to the loo. I mean, I don't quite understand why dresses haven't become more of a thing. I know the kilt's a thing. And there was a bit of a man Prada dress that Beckham wore a few years back now. But I don't know why we're not wearing dresses. They're, they're brilliant. They are freeing. Um, they're really liberating. This is a samurai kind of vibe. You can do anything, you know, and, and there's lots of air and wafting going on. It's, it's the way it's the future men in dresses awesome and you know no offense to you Duane and mark but obviously ellie's character nell she's much smarter than you two and she's forced to be the... yeah, yeah, yeah. honesty is a genius <laughs> but, you know she's supposed to be the mum of the group i think reluctantly so so ellie for you what, what was that dynamic like to explore and having these two guys to sort well, of I shepherd have to try. i didn't have to try very hard <laughs> um so... behind the scenes were yeah it was it was art reflecting life in many ways um but no, it was it was great because I think that, yeah, they you know, the dynamic works between all three of us and you need someone to sort of, you know, I don't want to say be the straight person. I don't think she's completely straight, but it's like she she, she knows what she's doing, essentially, and they don't. And you, you just need someone. You, the, these lads need some guidance <laughs> and uh, and their guiding life. For sure, yeah, and you know, like to, yeah, literally, <laughs> we're always calling Ellie for advice, <laughs> life advice. Well, I'm glad actually you mentioned real life as well because obviously you hinted at it, Mark. But behind the scenes, the dynamic, obviously, the friendship the three of you developed, how did that really feed into your characters? And did it maybe lead to any changes along the way, given the dynamic you found? I don't think it changed. I, mean, I do think we're incredibly lucky to all get on, and and as I say, the wider outside of our gang 
the every day you show up on a show like this, there's a brilliant comedy performer that you see on the call sheet. You think, oh, Asim Chowdhury's in today, or Greg Davis is in today, or Jessica Hines is in today. Oh, Tamsin, Tamsin Greg's in today. And there's just a, it's, there's all, it's Mark Heap. I mean, honestly, the list is endless. My mum was an extra. Your mum was an extra. That day was extraordinary. <laughs> In the Market Square in London. I think, was she a flower seller? Yeah, but she didn't make the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's really, you're, you're My daughter was in. there. Yeah. Wow. It, it was a really, I, I know it gets oversaid and I worry that it gets heard as a cliche, but all I can tell is it's true. It felt like quite a family affair and it really felt wholesomely like that. Oh, amazing. And for all of you, you know, at least to begin with, I think all of, you know, Dick Turpin does come across as quite the idiot and hard to figure out why these guys are following him. So what what is your take on each of your characters, why they get behind him before, obviously, later in the series when they develop more of a friendship and a kinship? I think for, I think it's it's very difficult for my character because obviously she would be an excellent leader. But also I think that she is diplomatic. She can see that dick appeals to these two absolute losers so who are her friends so it, i think that she's willing to maybe not be the one who's getting you know ha, you know has to actually lead because when she's put under pressure she sort of buckles quite a lot so it's probably quite good for her to sit back and be like cynical but actually not be the one who's the heat is on her most mm -hmm. of the time mm -hmm. I think honesty gravitates to uh, kind hearts and people's hearts. So I feel like when Dick comes in again, like I said earlier, um, the fact that he was able to kind of express himself and the freedom to express himself, I think that's what makes honesty kind of gravitate to him quite well. Yeah, and I think Moose, he's sort of quite repressed character. He's just fallen into a groove of being a high woman. And suddenly this guy saying things like panache and... You know, he, he comes out with all these like words like, you what? That sounds amazing. And it feels quite exciting and liberating to suddenly be given freedom to put on a dress, to knit, to do things that he hasn't even imagined that are quite mind blowing, um, which I think gives him a huge amount of confidence and lets him know that he doesn't just have to be a heavy highway robber. Yeah, for so sure. He can do that pretty well, too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, of course, Hugh Bonneville, I think a lot of people know him from the Paddington films, such a lovable character there and Danton Abbey, but he's getting to sink his teeth into quite a nasty villain here. So for again, all three of you, what was it like to go head to head with him at times in the show and, and play back and forth on that? He's the best. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he is. he's so a bit of a masterclass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's actually kind of close, the little intimidating. Things that, yeah. He's a very brilliant. You're like, yeah. let me do that again and do a tiny different mm. thing with his eyes. And you're like, all right, that's proper acting. Yeah. I was literally in awe, like yeah. being on set with him and just watching the things that he does, the yeah. choices that he makes. Yeah. He's so, and he's amazing. chilled and cool. Yeah. yeah. Really chilled, very down to earth, and incredibly easy to get on with. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And, you know, there's some fun supernatural elements to this story as well, which I think are going to surprise people. I won't go too much into them, but for the three of you on set, getting to work with a few special effects and then seeing the finished product, how much did you enjoy that side of things as well? Surprisingly, it didn't get in the way, did it? No. I, I think I thought sometimes, oh, it's going to be a lot of that green screeny type stuff. No, it it like wasn't. It was... They were into quite practical yeah, effects. Yeah, yeah. Like, this guy really is on a carriage, mm. zipping through the forest with branches just missing his head. For real. Loved yeah. it. Really real. It was a dream. Honestly, just the fact that it adds the little fantasy element and there is all these different kind of things, though, the stunts that we can be doing, the action, it just... These two jumping off into water. I mean, you did it. It was real. Yeah, yeah. for real. I always wanted to do my own stunts and that was the first time I could actually kind of sink my teeth into something like that. And I did it again yeah. and again and again. It filmed also a lot on location, so that helped. Yeah. Like, there wasn't that much on set, so it actually felt very real and very... Um, like, when I'm... I'm I don't know if this is a spoiler if I'm allowed to say this, but at one stage I'm tied to a, a burning stake and that was actually us surrounded by fire. Yes, it was. And it um, really yeah, was. They didn't check with me. Oh, but, oh, um, no, they did. The they woods, did. Like that woods in Wales where there was this particular woods we went to with loads of moss everywhere and mm. really exciting different mm. types of woods you'd go to and you feel it because you're there rather than being in a studio and it yeah. being pretend. And it makes me feel like as well, especially for Honesty's character, that he is literally like a superhero. And I think that's something that he's always wanted to do in his life. I think from when he was young, he wanted to kind of be a super. I don't know if it's honestly I'm talking about. I don't want to blend brands, but this guy just sees this massive audition for a Marvel. Movie. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, no, but it was great.
it was great and yeah well that's incredible and you know obviously um mark you mentioned some of the amazing guest stars in this series and it's such a showcase for for british actors and, and british comedy actors as well so again all three of you well, what do you think is important about british comedy and for it to be showcased on a platform like apple where it's going to reach that global audience beyond yeah. obviously our channels here in the uk i think that's I, I mean i've never been part of like a global show like this before and you'd think that maybe that would mean that you had to forsake some of the british sense of humor or um so forego that but it, it actually feels like it's really encouraged in this to be a bit weird to be a bit eccentric uh to be sort of sarcastic to have like really big silly characters um that feels like like a sort of traditional british sitcom but on a kind of larger scale so that's amazing that that was so encouraged um because yeah, maybe maybe you wouldn't necessarily equate that with like a global streaming platform, but Apple TV Plus really encouraged it. And the fact that it can appeal to that was a nice little advert. Yes, yeah. that, that was nice, brilliant. But and the fact that it could appeal to uh, so many different um, age ranges. Totally. So yeah. it's like literally a family show, a family from different ages, from the grandma to the daughter to the son to the nephew to the uncle. We get all it. ages. We get family. Yeah, the dogs, cats, like all ages. Brother, brother. They step can step literally step. just watch it and enjoy it as a family Great show. Great aunts come. Yeah, and I, I, it, as Ellie said, it's wildly eccentric, and all that British eccentricity was definitely encouraged. And writers are keeping it quite particular rather than homogenized broad stuff so even though there is i think there is a breadth to it that makes it all very understandable we've kept a lot of that weirdness mm -hmm. at the heart of it and i'm sure a lot of that is to do with noel as well uh, as an exec and as you know things pass through his filter and he has quite a peculiar take yeah. on the world mm -hmm. Amazing. And, you know, I, as I said at the beginning of the interview, I had such a good time with these characters, with the show. So I feel like I know what the answer might be for you three. But do you think you'd like to come back for a season two and, no, and continue? No, no, no. Okay. Big thumbs down, down bro. Bro. Of course. <laughs> I would love to, man. Definitely, man. Honestly, it was such a great pleasure working on something like this. And it will be very, very nice and interesting and fun to see where it can go. Yeah, I can't wait to see where they go yeah. and what they get up to if they get granted the permission to do more fly, things. To fly. Maybe they will fly. <laughs> oh, that will make one a superhero. Yeah, true. Marvel, here we come. <laughs> Perfect. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time today. Ellie, Mark, Dwayne had, like I said, great time with this show and I cannot wait for people to see it. So thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you.